Hey friends, Ash here with Gen Sense. Back outside, not in the layer today. Today I'm going to be doing a review of a fragrance that's actually been requested for a long time. And it's one that I've never gotten around to doing until just now. Shut up, bird. Fragrance that I'm talking about, of course, you already know. Versace Dylan Blue. And yeah, this is an enormous bottle. I actually bought this from FragranceNet when they were having one of those deals where they have the biggest size of bottle for the smallest amount for whatever reason. That's how I ended up with this, 200 milliliters of Versace Dylan Blue. Like I said, people have been asking me to do this review for a long time, just never got around to it, and I'm trying to catch back up on some of those reviews that have been requested over and over and over and over again, like I did with Club de Nuit Intense Band before this one. Like always, I'll break this fragrance down, let you know what I think about it, let you know some of the pros, maybe some of those cons. We'll go over the presentation of the fragrance as well, like always. And I'll just give you my overall thoughts on Versace Dylan Blue. So let's go ahead and jump into this. First off, the presentation. Here you've got the front of the box for as the name of the fragrance, name of the house, and the size and concentration down there on the bottom. Like I said, this is a big boy, 200 milliliters. On the top of the box, you've got the name of the house, Versace. You have this pattern that runs along each side of the box. On the back, you have your ingredient information right down here. And then on the bottom, you have your badge code and barcode. Now let's take a good look at the bottle. This is a bottle design that I really, really like. I think it's a classy look for a bottle. Uh, Versace uses this on three different fragrances. On this one, Dylan Blue, on Versace Pour Homme, and on Versace Oud Noir. So you can see here on the front of the bottle, you have this little medallion that has the Medusa symbol on it. The top of the cap is patterned like so. And it also says Versace along the neck of the bottle. On the bottom, you have your sticker with your batch code. The cap on this fragrance does click into place as a little Medusa on the top of the atomizer, which you can see right there. And the atomizer on this is pretty good. Let me waste a spray for you guys. So Versace Dylan Blue at this point, for whatever reason, has become basically the whipping boy fragrance for all people that hate blue fragrances. And of course by blue fragrances, I mean versatile, compliment-getting fragrances that are easy to wear that the vast majority of people are going to like. People in the fragrance community that are more into niche fragrances, more into indie fragrances, uh, more into unique fragrances, for whatever reason have all banded together and decided that Dylan Blue is the worst offender when it comes to blue fragrances. For a little while, Dior Sauvage was the cool fragrance to hate on, uh, but it seems like for a while now, the fragrance that's been hated on the most is Dylan Blue. There is a yellow jacket right at the camera here, so awesome. It just flew behind me, probably because it's planning to sneak up and sting me at some point during this video. Awesome. I guess I'll just go ahead and break down how the fragrance smells, how it comes across to me, and then I'll let you guys know my opinion on Dylan Blue and whether I think all that hate that it gets is warranted or not. In the opening, Versace Dylan Blue has a little bit of a shower gel vibe to it. There's no real way around that. Uh, a fresh men's shower gel. You've got a citrus combo of bergamot and grapefruit that work together in the opening. Uh, they smell really nice. They're pretty sweet. And again, it's a very familiar kind of opening. Grapefruit and bergamot are used so often in fragrances, especially men's fresh fragrances. There's also a fig leaf note in the opening that's not overly strong. It's more a bit player, kind of a nuance, but it does add a touch of greenery to the opening. That being said, the first few times that you spray this fragrance on and smell it, you might miss that fig note completely. But if you spray this on and you look for it, you search it out, you'll find it. Along with that citrus combo, you've got an aquatic undertone, which again, uh, is not super unique, but it smells nice. It's very pleasant in the opening. I have nothing negative to say about it in terms of how it smells, other than saying maybe it's not very unique. There's also an ambroxan note that you pick up early on, and that ambroxan stays for pretty much the entire life of the fragrance. That fragrance that I talked about just a little bit ago, Dior Sauvage, that's probably the most well-known men's fragrance that has a huge ambroxan note. 
And while Dylan Blue does slot into that vein or style of fragrance that Dior Sauvage is in, the Ambroxan in Dylan Blue is toned way down when compared to Dior Sauvage. It's not as much of an overload, not as much in your face, it's reined in more. In the opening though, like I talked about just a little bit ago, Dylan Blue definitely comes across off the top like a fresh, clean shower gel kind of fragrance with some fruity sweetness and ambroxan. Once you hit that mid, the grapefruit and the bergamot combo starts to fade away, starts to fall into the background a bit. You still do pick up a decent amount of sweetness from that citrus combo. It's just those two notes, bergamot and grapefruit, are not at all as prominent. Instead, what starts to become more prominent through the mid is black pepper and incense. Those two notes start to work in with the Ambroxan that I picked up from the top, and Dylan Blue actually starts to darken up a bit. You also pick up a green violet leaf note in the mid, and a lot of that sweetness, the further that the fragrance dries down, starts to fade away, and it stops smelling as much like a shower gel fragrance. That shower gel kind of vibe, that's really most prominent in the opening. So sometimes when I hear people say that Dylan Blue is just a shower gel fragrance the whole way through, it makes me think they probably haven't sprayed the fragrance on, worn it all the way through, and seen how it changes from the opening through the mid through the dry down. Because as Dylan Blue progresses through the mid and the incense becomes more and more and more prominent, that shower gel filling fades more and more and more away until it's no longer there at all. Once you hit the full dry down, Dylan Blue actually has a little bit of an earthy tinge to it, which I imagine is coming from the patchouli in the base of the scent. Off my skin, the pepper fades away as Dylan Blue hits the dry down, so that note is really just there through the mid as the incense starts to really come into the fragrance. You've also got a little dose of musk and a touch of tonka in the dry down as well, but the main things to me, once you hit the dry down, are the incense and the ambroxan. I guess if you wanted to overly simplify it, kind of like an incense and ambroxan mix with musk and tonka underneath that. And that little touch of earth that I talked about from the patchouli. So it does have a little bit of sweetness, but it's not overly sweet. Honestly, once it dries down, Dylan Blue is more of a warm fragrance to me than it is a really fresh and sweet one. I mean, when you first spray it on, absolutely 100%. It comes across like a fresh citrus ambroxan fragrance. Again, shower gel-like, which is what gets thrown around a lot when you talk about this fragrance. But the longer this stays on your skin, the more it goes just in a different direction than that. It continuously gets darker as it dries down, like I've said, as the incense, the pepper, the tonka, the musk, all these other notes start to work in and the citruses fade away. Once you hit the full dry down, it even has kind of a dusty, ambery kind of vibe to it, which again is probably because of how it comes across a little warmer in the dry down. Amber, obviously not an official note in this fragrance. It's absolutely a versatile fragrance, easy to wear, it's compliment getting fragrance, uh, one that you could wear day or night. I would wear it spring, summer, or fall, probably not winter time, even though it does get a little bit darker with the incense coming out and everything. It's still not really what I would consider a winter fragrance when it's really, really cold outside. Honestly, I'm not even sure why Dylan Blue became the whipping boy for blue fragrances outside of it being popular. It's not a direct copy of any of the other popular blue fragrances that are out there. It kind of fills its own little niche in the blue fragrance world. It has ambroxan, but not too much. It's not as overloaded as Sauvage. So ambroxan-wise, it kind of falls in somewhere between Blue de Chanel and Sauvage. It has a bit of incense, but not too much incense. Uh, fragrance like Aqua de Jo Profumo, which is another very popular fragrance that, while it's not in a blue bottle, would kind of fall in the same vein, same style of fragrance, versatile, compliment-getting type scent. The incense in Dylan Blue is less than the incense in Aqua de Jo Profumo, so it's giving you a little bit, but not too much of that note. Some people might say, yeah, but Dylan Blue doesn't smell as natural as Blue de Chanel or something like that. As if Blue de Chanel is some beacon of natural perfumery. <laughs> Nothing against Blue de Chanel, I love the fragrance, just saying. But then you have to consider also the price. Versace Dylan Blue, you can pick that up between 30 and $50, depending on what size we're talking about, as long as you're shopping at discounters. Good luck finding Blue de Chanel for that price, at least a legitimate Blue de Chanel. You could find a fake, probably, for that price. I have smelled much worse fragrances in my time. I mean, Dylan Blue is not at all a bad smelling fragrance, and as far as blue fragrances go, at least it switches things up. At least it changes from the opening, into the mid, into the dry down. It gets knocked for being a shower gel fragrance, but that's just in the opening. Like I've said, it's a very versatile fragrance. 
a big compliment getter. If you're wearing this type of scent, it's probably for those reasons, to appeal to a lot of people, to have people smell the fragrance that you're wearing and say, hey, that smells really nice. And this does that. Now, I don't think it's the most amazing blue fragrance that's ever been released, but it's really not as bad as a lot of people would make it out to be. I think on Fragrantica right now, it's about like a seven and a half out of 10. And that seems about right for Dylan Blue. Now let's go ahead and talk about performance. Uh, off my skin, I don't think it's actually as good as a lot of people make it out to be. So it could just maybe not work that well for me. I'm not sure. Longevity is fine. I mean, it'll last over eight hours off my skin, so that's not really an issue. It's just in terms of projection. It projects really well as it heads through the mid, but once it dries down, it's pretty light off my skin. Not necessarily a skin scent, but you have to get pretty close in order to pick it up. Unless I decided to go really heavy with the sprayer, I guess, and then you could probably pick it up pretty well. But assuming normal wear, uh, it does not project really hard off my skin, at least once it hits the dry down, which for me is gonna be about an hour in. That's when I notice it start to get a lot weaker and sit closer to the skin. I know that the house of Versace, just in general, in terms of fragrances, is not for everybody. For some reason, Versace seems to catch hate a lot more than other houses like Armani, for example. A certain sect in the fragrance community seems to just not really take Versace releases all that seriously. Maybe it's because Versace is more affordable at discounters than a lot of other fragrance houses out there, designer fragrance houses. And honestly, I'm not sure why there is that little subsect that hates everything Versace, because they sell really well. They've got very popular fragrances, Versace Pour Homme, Versace Mano Fraiche, Versace Dylan Blue, Versace Eros. All those fragrances sell really well. And I guess maybe that is why they catch hate from a certain subsect in the fragrance community. They're affordable, they get compliments, they're easy to wear, and they're just really mass appealing in general. For the longest time, I've thought Versace Oud Noir is one of the absolute best entry-level designer ouds out there, period. Not that expensive, great bottle, great smell, easy to wear, at least my opinion. And Dylan Blue fills the blue fragrance need of Versace. And let's be real, every single designer house out there either has a blue fragrance or they're gonna be releasing one really soon. Looking at you, Valentino, born in Roma, and Dylan Blue is much better than Born in Roma. And in my opinion, it's better than a lot of other blue fragrances that have been released by other designer brands that don't catch anywhere near the amount of hate that Dylan Blue does. So I can only imagine it's because this one is quite popular. Again, quite affordable, very versatile, very compliment getting. So you'll see a lot of guys who are maybe newer to getting fragrances or who just like to stick to their designer fragrances. And when they talk about how they like Dylan Blue, it pisses off the people that are into fragrance as art. Is this mind blowing? No, not in my opinion, but does it do its job and does it do it well? Yeah, yeah it does. And I can't hate on a fragrance for doing exactly what it was made to do. So I guess for me, if I were gonna have to give this a definitive thumbs up or thumbs down, just breaking it down that simply, I guess I'd have to give it a thumbs up. This gets compared the most to Blue de Chanel, and if I had to choose between Blue de Chanel and Dylan Blue, I'd rather wear Blue de Chanel. But you can get Dylan Blue at less than half the cost, and it's gonna fill the exact same uses as Blue de Chanel, so I completely understand why so many guys would go for Dylan Blue. All right guys, that's gonna do it for this review of Versace Dylan Blue. I know there are gonna be some people in the comments that say that this is a terrible trash fragrance, but we're just gonna have to agree to disagree on this one. For the price, it does exactly what it's supposed to do and it does it well. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I'll see you guys again tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys. I didn't get stung by the way, so awesome. Oh,